Hey everybody, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, we're gonna look at my peaches, my nectarines. I have a little bit of a harvest. They definitely have their issues, you know, like most fruit trees do, um, especially the stone fruits. However, of the stone fruits, I find that they're one of the easier stone fruits to manage and deal with here in this climate. And they're also really good. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a taste test of these white nectarines and white peaches. I planted here, most of these are white varieties um, of peaches and nectarines. I have one nectarine here. This is my Arctic Glow. It was on a, uh, a dwarfing rootstock. Next to it is my Indian Free Peach, which is not a, a white peach, but um, I also have about three white nectarines behind these trees that are standards and they're planted kind of like the Dave Wilson nursery style that they recommend to a lot of backyard growers and I would recommend that method to some more inexperienced or less passionate backyard growers because there's a lot of benefits of having not just one tree here or two trees here but I have six trees in this little area here um, and they're all planted relatively close. They do really well if you can prune them um, and keep them to their own space and make sure that they're getting adequate sunlight, like this side of the, of the planting here, because there's four trees right in here. Underneath is comfrey, by the way, which I find really helps. But the trees on this side, on the north side of the house, um, don't get that afternoon sun as much because the sun comes across the house and then sets like right over here. So this area of the, uh, the planting, you really need to be careful of because these trees more towards the west side are going to basically get more of that sunlight. So what you have to do in the wintertime is kind of prune back these trees over here a bit more harshly than you would the trees on the north side. So you can make it work. I think there's obviously some benefits, some negatives to doing it like this. I would. For more serious growers, I would probably just plant one tree uh, or two trees, and then I would graft different varieties that you want um, on top of those, those trees. I think it's really nice, though, having the genetic diversity here with these different types of peaches, different types of nectarines. You know, it's not just your standard yellow peaches here that I'm growing. I've got different varieties here like uh, Sugar May, we have Blushing Star, uh, White Lady, the Arctic Glow. Um, we have, I think, also a yellow peach over here, as well as the Indian Free. Um, but for the most part, I, uh, I have too many peaches. Because if you guys have seen my other videos on some of these peaches, you know that I've got two standard peaches um, that are espaillade on the south side of the house. And they do really well. That's Red Haven and Alberta. I have very little problems with those, but the cat birds, as I mentioned, are kind of getting to all of them. They just, if you can't control the cat bird, and I've used these organza bags, they get through the organza bags. It slows them down a bit, which is nice, um, but they eventually get through them. They destroy the bag. What I have to do is actually come in here with uh, some bird netting on top of the organza bag to really secure my harvest. The issue though is that these trees get rather big and yeah we can keep them in, in check in terms of their height and I will do that. Um, we've already done some summer pruning on these trees. I have to go through and do another bit of summer pruning because they are getting a bit tall um, but for the most part you know they're very difficult to stop the the catbird from getting to these these stone fruits and if you have a lot of them uh, you're really in for some trouble. So I've yet to really come up with the best solution, but as a result, I think I'd rather have more stone fruits uh, to kind of let the cat birds do their own thing and kind of let them off in their own little area. And then that way I can have my own harvest here of, of stone fruits, regardless if they're peaches or nectarines. So I'm gonna actually come in here. It really sucks to do this 
is come in here and actually pull some of these off prematurely. And I've mentioned this in so many other videos, but the longer you guys can get these peaches and nectarines to hang on the tree, the better they're going to taste. You know, this is kind of like picking them right now. It's kind of like you would do something you would get at the, uh, you know, the grocery store. It's not ideal, right? We want to be picking these fruits at the most optimum ripeness. And that's just not the case um, that I'm able to do here because of the catbirds. And yeah, we can get lucky. We can have some success. I've gotten a few nectarines so far, and I've gotten peaches obviously in, in prior years that have uh, that perfect ripeness to them. Like this white peach here. Let's see, what, what variety is this, just so I know. This is uh, Sugar May. And they're, they're quite early, these two, by the way. The Arctic Glow, the Sugar May, it seems like. I know the Arctic Glow has ripened the first of all of my peaches and nectarines um, for two years now. But uh, this is the fruit. And it's not perfect. It's got some spots there. It looks like maybe some plum curlio damage. There's some damage there at the bottom. Um, it is quite soft. I wouldn't... I would imagine that maybe the... Uh, the pit is split as well, which I'll show you guys after I bite into this. I don't know if you saw that. As soon as you sink your teeth into it, it's just like tons of juice that comes out of these things. Yeah. So it looks like the pit may have split. Not that good. Um, it is obviously homegrown, and I would say it competes with some, some uh, white peaches you'd find at the store, but it could be a little bit better. And maybe this variety I'm not that big of a fan of, but you can tell that the inside still has a little bit left to go. The Arctic Glow is a bit more acidic. Even though it is a white nectarine, it does retain more of that acidity than this particular variety. It's really good. Not the best peach I've ever had. Uh, maybe because it's a little bit young. I don't know. Maybe because we could have got a little bit more ripeness out of it. That for sure. But overall, um, I've been blown away by some of these nectarines, so I've been coming out here and picking some of these over the last week or so, and um, really been pleased by getting some of these fruits as early as I am in the quantity and the quality that I am. I mean, some of these white nectarines, guys, we just do a little twist, by the way. Twist and tug, and you can tell that some of these really are high-quality uh, pieces of fruit. They're just a bit hard. They, they got some good color on them this year. And uh, probably that's because they're on this side um, of the planting here. But overall, again, highly recommend peaches, nectarines. They're one of the more easier to grow stone fruits. They don't get nearly as many problems, although you're going to get these problems that I'm dealing with. And hopefully you guys don't have cat birds. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys here for watching this one. What I'm going to do, I think, is do a little bit of a comparison. Um, do a little bit of a rating, I think, of what is my favorite peach and what is my favorite nectarine. I know my, fi my uh, friend Adam has been really interested to hear about that. What is my favorite nectarine or favorite peach? And I don't have an answer just yet. But I'll tell you this. The... Uh, the Red Haven and the Arctic Glow so far are in the lead. So yeah, thank you guys for checking this one out. Uh, check us out on Figbud, uh, Fig Boss. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> and also Facebook and Instagram. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care and stay safe out there.